Good morning. Welcome to our harvest worship. We're having a local arrangement service today, so Leroy, wherever he's gone, <laughs> Susan and Mark and myself are all taking part. And there's all but the last hymn are old-fashioned harvest songs that we used to all know. I hope you'll all sing along and enjoy what is quite an old-fashioned service. The reflection today was originally written by my brother-in-law, Reverend Henry Gordon. It must be at least 20 years old, as Henry died 12 years ago and retired eight years before that. So for all it is that old, it links harvest and our current thinking about protecting our world through the words of the prophet Isaiah. Before we start, can I just remind you that part of next week's service will be our general church meeting. If you haven't already brought your harvest gifts to the front, could you bring them to the front during the first hymn? So let's start our worship with We Plough the Fields and Scatter the Good Seed on the Land. God, we come before you this morning with, with loving and thankful hearts. We've come to give you all our praise and adoration for what we've just sung about in that hymn, that all good gifts come from you. And for that, we are truly grateful. We cling on to that promise that whatever we have is from you. You give us blessings in abundance. You give us your love. You show us compassion. You show us your mercy. And we are truly thankful. 
We praise you with all of our hearts as we are able to come here this morning on this special Harvest Sunday. We come with thankful hearts for your bounty of your harvest to us. But we also thank you that we can come with a generous heart because we bring our gifts for those who are less fortunate than we are. And so we pray for the work of walking with. We pray that each person or each family who will receive the bounty of our gifts will feel truly blessed and truly loved. Father, we know it has been a difficult time and is still not over the best yet. But help us not to dwell on the negative parts of what has gone on lately, but to think of what good has come out of this pandemic. Help us to address ourselves and see how we have become better people, not bitter people, but better people, because of how it has changed our lives, mainly in wanting to help other people. So we thank you that you can keep us held up as we proceed to be the better people, the positive people. And yet, Lord, forgive us for one of the times that, that we are negative, the times that we are selfish, the times that we are self-centered, the times that we are unkind, by our actions and our words. So Lord, we are thankful that we can come to you at any time with our shortcomings and know that you will hear and you will forgive because we have that promise that sins confessed are indeed sins forgiven. And we need to cling on to that hope and know we can come to you at any time. So Lord, we offer you this time of worship, whether it be as a congregation worshipping together this morning, or whether it be for people listening to it or watching it online later. May we all be truly blessed in what we receive from this service this morning. And so we offer it to you in loving, thankful hearts and in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We'll sing again for the fruits of all creation. Thanks be to God.
New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 12. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to give me my share of what our father left us when he died. Jesus answered, Who gave me the right to settle arguments between you and your brother? Then he said to the crowd, Don't be greedy. Owning a lot of things won't make your life safe. So Jesus told them this story. A rich man's farm produced a big crop, and he said to himself, What can I do? I don't have a place large enough to store everything. <coughs> Later, he said, Now I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, where I can store all my grain and other goods. Then I'll say to myself, You have stored up enough good things to last for years to come. Live it up, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, You fool, tonight you will die. Then who will get what you have stored up? This is what happens to people who store up everything for themselves, but are poor in the sight of God. Amen. Our next thing, hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. And this is sung and recorded at Wars End Baptist Church at, uh, on King's Road. So we'll sing All Things Bright and Beautiful.
Our second reading this morning is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. Amen. I owe you an apology, or rather I owe Margaret an apology. I forgot about Margaret taking part at the fall. How can you forget about Margaret? <laughs> and the dog. <laughs> It took an age to get that done, believe it. <laughs> Never mind, it would. Seed and bread, based on the reading you've just heard, Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. The harvest season calls us back to the great simplicities of our human existence, so great and so simple that we often ignore them or fail to see them at all. We are so steeped in our artificial values and so sophisticated in our urban life that we pass by the impressive wonders of nature, which are God's message to us, who are also part of nature. It is certain that Jesus, who lived so close to the earth, found in the natural world around him a clue to eternal truth, a growing witness for the true values and an avenue to communion with God. He saw a sparrow fall to the ground and in its final flutter he saw the presence of God. As he watched a farmer scatter seeds over the ploughed earth, he remembered humankind's physical needs and the daily provision of a good God. The wayside flowers bobbing in the breeze seem to mock at human care and anxiety. The seed growing secretly and easily in the fertile field was a sacrament to divine providence. Nature was a signpost pointing to the great eternities which are still as true in our tractor ploughed culture as they were to Adam and Eve. Centuries before Christ Isaiah allowed the natural order to speak the same message from God. He depicts nature's strange cooperation as each event makes its significant contribution to the wonder of the harvest field. The rain quenching the thirst of the parched land dissolves the rich hidden chemicals that nurture the seedlings. The snow's icy blanket protects the roots from the fierce frosts, and when melted, provides a pool of sustenance. This natural cooperation leads the prophet to view the word of God, which coming like rain and snow to water the earth and make it fruitful, communicates God's gracious answer to man's deepest needs. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater forms a harvest message from God to every age. Notice then the priorities in the natural succession. First, seed for the sower, and then bread for the eater. To make this easily memorable, you could say seed before feed. God who provides the raw materials for man's life expects him to lay by the seed for the next crop before he grinds the rest for flour and bread. The harvest field cries out to us, preserve your outlay and increase it for your successors. There is a deeply moving play called The Black Stranger that deals with the Irish tragedy when a potato harvest failed and famine, like a black stranger, stalked the land. The author tries to give us a picture of an old farmer trying to face dire odds with primitive wisdom. 
His family is hungry. His sons return from building roads that lead to nowhere, crying out for food and preparing to raid the larder. Stand back, cries the farmer, guarding his seed potatoes like gold dust. In the room lies our only hope for the future. The farmer must secure the natural succession, first the seed and then the bread in that order. It is the countryman's first instinct that he dare not tamper with his capital. Yet time and again, human greed tampers with this natural law. Bread to the eater, and then if anything is left over, then seed to the sower. How tragically we saw this in America, where the great dust bowl stands as a rebuke to men who put profit before providence. The city speculators rushed to the land, stripped it of its fertility, taking crop after crop without restoring any of the goods earth chemicals. They never repaid the humus for its generosity, so the land was destroyed. Disastrous results follow when we forget that the future must be carefully secured. So moves like reforestation uh, where oak and beech and fir are being re-established are surely moves that take that into account. But in other ways is this generation not living on the capitals of the past, using it as bread for the eater and carelessly ignoring the claims of the future successors of our culture and spirit? Are we squandering the harvest of our fathers? Take our nation's moral assets. These are the products of religious convictions of the past, the accumulations of centuries of faithful men and women who sought the way of Christ and whose wisdom has been passed down to us. Our society has spurned the church and its message, and already we have perhaps third and fourth generations of whom don't know the morals of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the capital investment of the past constantly dwindles, we begin to see a famine of honesty and trust in our society. What sort of plague and pestilence are we concocting for our children who will have no inherited seed of moral and righteous living? Seed before feed. Notice too the purpose of the divine plenty. Nature, which is God's instrument, is intended to answer human need. To make this easily memorable, the harvest would say need and not greed. Humankind requires seed and bread. The whole natural world conspires to provide it. And those two basic necessities Human need must therefore be the primary consideration of humankind's political, economic and social life. What after all was the purpose of industry? Several answers spoken or silent have been given to this question. Some would say that industry exists to provide profit for the few. But the later William, late Dr. William Temple wisely said, in the nature of things, the object of producing goods is that human needs may be satisfied. In economic terms, production exists for the sake of the consumer. Consequently, the production of food should be regulated with a view to satisfying the hunger of humanity not with a view to the profits of the producer. Others would exploit industry to increase the power of central executive. Experience of that through the world has shown the production of massive armies of bureaucrats who deal in paper forms rather than profitable foods. For example, the Lord's Prayer has 56 words, 10 commandments has 247. America's Declaration of Independence had 300 words. 
the EEC regulation on caramel imports has 26,911. Others would say that industry exists to provide a happy community for the workers, but the whole purpose is to answer the needs of both producer and consumer. The primary purpose of God's plenty and man's distribution of it is to answer need and not to stimulate greed. This calls for a new generation of God as the giver and man as the steward. Such recognition of our relative position in the universe will alone help us on the road to sanity. It also calls for a world view. Hunger is a universal experience to be met universally. Wherever humans suffer need, the whole world must cooperate to relieve it. Therefore, we must banish from our society every restrictive practice that would curtail our ability to share God's provisions with our needy brothers and sisters. Need and not greed is the call of Christ. Note to the program of the harvest, it is a creed that ignores speed. That's very hard for us to accept who wish to plan a project today and see it finished tomorrow. The Isaiah Creed accepts God's measured pace in the works of nature. Winter rains and snow are followed by spring sun and the miracle of germination. This is a slow, sometimes tedious procedure. But this, says the prophet, is how God also deals with humanity. But the prophet's creed is also a glowing affirmation that nothing is ever wasted in God's economy. He says, so in my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. This daring faith was echoed by St. Paul. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Every noble deed, every act of faith, every piece of unselfish service is contributing to the great harvest of human brotherhood and peace. This is the intention of God, and we are given the priceless privilege of sharing with him in its realization. In the harvest field of God, we are laborers together with Christ. Amen. Our next hymn is Come Ye Thankful People Come, Raise the Song of Harvest Home.
Now we've got our prayers of intercession. Now we're going to pray for the world to give us a lovely big harvest for everybody in the world. And what I'm going to do on the board, you're going to have to imagine that this little star is God. Now God is made up of lots and lots of different colours. And I'm sure there's lots of colours of God that we haven't discovered yet. But we're going to concentrate on five colours of God. We're going to pray for protection. We're going to pray for the colour that God sends us for the growers, for the farmers. We're going to pray for strong crops so everybody has a harvest. And we're going to pray for charity for the givers, the colour that God sends us for charity. And we're going to pray for God's love, the colour of God's love. Now we'll have a response. So when I say, Lord of the harvest, if you can say, hear our prayers. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayers. Loving Lord, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you give us. Now let's pray for the colour of God's protection. We thank you for creating this beautiful earth and all the vibrant forms of life within it. Forgive us for having foolishly abused it and reducing its resources. We confess to you our failure to be wise stewards of your world. Help us to recognize all life and turn away from self-interests and greed to protect the climate and the life which it depends on. May we live in such a way that we do not rob others of the means of life. Help us to protect your creation so that there will be clean water, clean air and plenty of wild birds, mammals and insects to maintain the correct eco-balance for our countryside. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Now let's pray for the farmers and the growers. God's colour, green. We give thanks for all who work on the land and sea to provide our daily food. We pray for farmers in all parts of the world who have planted the seeds and tended the crops, and the fruit of whose labours we enjoy. Grant that they may receive a fair return for their labours, and hope for the future with a stable climate. We pray too for those who distribute our food, and for ourselves, that we may shop wisely and with thoughts for others. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Now let's pray for good, strong, healthy crops. God's colour, good, strong, healthy crops. Father God, we are mindful that while we are well fed and nourished, there are many who are short of food, whose harvests have failed for lack of rain or sun, whose livelihood has been destroyed by war, inhumanity, or exploration. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Now let's pray for the colour of God's charity. God, giver, give us generous hearts so we may increasingly give. Oops. technical issue here. God give us generous hearts so we may increasingly give our support to those working among the poor and underprivileged in the world and keep, keep us ever mindful of the Lord's command to love our neighbours whether close at hand or in the wider world. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of local food banks, providing food for those in need. Lord of the harvest, 
hear our prayer. Now let's pray for the colour of God's love. Lord, our God, help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. We particularly lift up Afghanistan at this time, as we hear of the devastation and injustices within that nation. We pray also for this country that the shortage of lorry drivers will be overcome so food will be delivered to the supermarkets, helping us enjoy the harvest of the world. Loving Father, you are the source of all life and the giver of all that is good. Hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. In Jesus' name, we pray for your love and protection for our great planet that you gave us, so we can have a vast and tremendous harvest for the whole world. Amen. Amen. And now we'll say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now we'll sing, and we can stand if we're able, Harvest Samba. This is a nice modern one from Messy Church, so just enjoy it. <laughs>
Now we're going to say the blessing. It's going to be on the screen if everyone reads it out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.